Now that you've seen Concurrent Dictionary, you pretty much know what to expect from the other concurrent collections. So the addition of elements uses fairly similar APIs, not always identical, but fairly similar. But the getting of the elements, that's typically the problem. So let's take a look at the queue. So in this case, what you would do is you would make a concurrent queue and that works similar to an ordinary queue. So you say, I want a queue of integers. And to add an element, you still use the unqueue function. So just like in a typical queue, without the concurrent part in it, you just call unqueue, and that adds the element to the end of the queue. And then, of course, to get the result, and let me just illustrate the fact that at the moment, uh, the queue has two and one. Well, that's the front. So if you want to get the front of the queue, for example, you can try to dequeue, but you cannot use queue.dequeue. You'll see that once again, there is a try method. So essentially what you have to do is you have to get a placeholder for the result. And then of course you say, if you manage to uh, dequeue the result, then and only then can you actually do something. So for example, we can write line uh, removed element result. Okay, so if we just run this, we remove the element one because that's the element that was on the front of the queue. So now we removed element one, element two is the only one that's in there. We can also use peak, uh, just like in an ordinary queue, to look at what's in the front of the queue, which element will be dequeued next if you were to dequeue the element. But the thing here, once again, is you have to use the try function. So here you, we can reuse the result uh, that we have up above. So once again, we can say if q.peak, try peak rather, out result, then we can say, for example, that, that this element is in the front of the queue. So front element is result, and we should get a two here. And that's exactly what we get. So fairly obvious stuff. We have uh, Booleans indicating whether the operation will in fact succeed or has in fact succeeded. And then of course you use the result as the out parameter, you store it somewhere and then you can uh, sort of use it. So essentially for peaking, you have to understand peaking will only work if there is actually an element in the queue. If the queue is empty, then try peak will return a false, obviously. And the same goes for dequeue. If the queue is empty, it will return a false. So this is a similar API to what you have with the queue, but with a few extra kind of safeguards to make sure that you use it correctly in a multi-threaded setting.